So in our discussion in class, a lot of you had questions about what do the A and the B mean? And what is the deal with all the functions on the rightmost columns? And so uh, in order to help you understand all of that, here's a little video to help you show what those things mean. So here's the C2H point group that we did in our original example. And we're going to imagine a px orbital. So you know that a px orbital uh, exists on in sort of along the x-axis and we're going to show here that there are the the, sh the sine of the wave function showing that there's two different sides. Okay so let's consider each of, so if this p orbital exists in the c2h point group let's consider the effect of each operation on this px orbital. So if you perform the identity operation on this px orbital that's like you picked it up and you put it back down the orbital stays the same. The red side is on the same side, the blue side is on the same side. So we're going to write down a 1 in the E column to show that the P orbital is symmetric with respect to the identity operation. If we do a C2, that C2 is going to be around the Z axis because the Z axis is the principal axis of rotation. Uh, we always define Z to be the principal axis just as a convention. Okay. So if you were to do a C2 around that uh, axis, you would find that after that happened, the red side was uh, on the left and the blue side was on the right. It would switch the, the, or the sign of the wave function. So that means that this orbital is not the same if we do the C2. So we're going to write down in the C2 column a negative one, showing that the px orbital is not symmetric with respect to C2. If uh, we do inversion, where we pull the uh, sort of like, you know, this end of the x orbital uh, through the center uh, and it comes out the other side. Then we will also see that the blue will be on the right side and the red will be on the left side. And so the orbital is not symmetric with respect to inversion. Finally, if we do a sigma h, so that's going to be, if, if z is the principal axis, then sigma h is going to be the xy plane so that so x is the uh, you know is defined going side to side and y is coming out toward us so that xy plane would slice through the uh, orbital sort of along that x-axis as shown on the screen if we reflected through that plane we would see that the orbital would stay the same the red side and the blue side would be just where they are now so we would write down a one this orbital is symmetric with respect to sigma h. So this combination, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, with respect to these operations, is one of the irreducible representations. Look here, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. So that means that the in, in the C2H point group, the px orbital has bu symmetry. In other words, the irreducible representation bu uh, describes or encapsulates or names the symmetry properties of, say, a px orbital in this group. Okay, and so we see that there's a little x here in this fourth column to mean the, the and one of the things that that could mean is the px orbital. Now, it could mean other things. x could mean um, a translation motion, so just moving in the x direction. Uh, we'll see later that x can mean a dipole in the x direction. Uh, but here, one thing it could mean is a px orbital. If we look at these other labels, so we see that the r's, these are going to be rotational motions. So the if the z, x, y, x, y, and z are translational motions, so that's motion in the x, y, z direction, we can also imagine rotation around those axes. And then here we have some quadratic functions. Um, and so those could mean, among other things, those could mean the d orbitals because we see the patterns. We see um, x squared and y squared, so those together can be x squared minus y squared. We see z squared, x, y, x, z, y, z. And so if we were to draw a picture of, say, the dz squared orbital, we would see that it would have sy symmetry with respect to all these operations. It could be described by a, g. Okay, so we start to see with this example how the character table is put together. Um, you'll see that there's, there will be a lot of different things that um, 
a, an x function could mean, right? So more than just a p x orbital can have b u symmetry in this group. Because remember, group theory isn't a labeling system for any particular molecule. It is a mathematical language that will help us describe several things about molecules. In the same way, multiplication doesn't mean anything specific. It's an operation that can be used to mean a lot of different things depending on your context. So in our next class, we'll get some more familiarity with how these things fit together. This is a process, so stay with me. Uh, but hopefully this little video helped you see how these things could be connected.